All right, buddy, welcome back. I am Matt Bamonte. I'm joined by Drake Sasser. So we are switching gears here. We're going to go play some Pioneer. We're jumping in round number three. We just saw an awesome finals match in Modern. Thanks for hanging out and being patient with us as we waited for the round to turn over there. Uh, I went and got a mountain doing some trail mix. I'm feeling great. How about you, Drake? Yeah, you're feeling good. I, I love that for you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, I, I briefly scrolled through while I was, you know, drinking some Mountain Dew and, and stuff in my face. Briefly scrolled through the deck list. There's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I think I assumed there'd be a ton of Monogreen Devotion, which there's there's a good amount, but there's a ton of brews and such like that, too. So we're going to see uh, some of our you know more well-known players this round. I believe we have Andrew Wolteice versus Will Kruger this round. Um, I believe it's Boros Feather, which is kind of cool. There's like a, a Dimir Control deck in, in the background. So it's going to be a lot of cool stuff today. Hopefully we can showcase some decks that are not um, you know the, the typical pillars like the Blue White Control and the Mono Green Devotion. We can get some other things. Uh, hopefully they, they rise up the ranks here throughout the, the Swiss rounds and they'll be able to show you some cool stuff. So you still think that uh, decks like Blue White, even after the banning, this, this is the context of this tournament. We have the banning of Expressive Iteration. We have the banning of Winota, Joiner of Forces. Now, those are pretty inarguably the top two decks. Those are some of the more powerful cards featured in each of those archetypes of Blue Red Prowess, Arc Light Phoenix Mixture, as well as obviously the namesake Winota deck. Winota itself is banned out of it from underneath it. Do you think these uh, old staples, like things we're talking about, Rakdos Midrange, which we're going to see in a second in the hands of Will Kruger, Blue White Control, you mentioned Green Devotion as well. You believe these decks are kind of next on the docket to, to rise to power? Do you think Blue Red can still keep up? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do I do think that they're all quite good as we jump down here to the feature match. I, I do think that they are uh, quite good still, very powerful, um, playing some some good cards. Uh, and they have a real game plan, right? They already have an established game plan. They, you know, one of the losers I think is the blue white control deck, um, just because the answers you don't know what answers you need to be playing, right? That's the nature of control decks in like week ones. You don't know exact answers, but it's pretty flexible. So I think it's still a good choice for the weekend. All those decks that are established, I think, are good choices. For sure. And Rakdos Midrange is a deck like we saw We saw a little bit uh, prior to the banning of Expressive Federation and Winota Joiner Forces. Boros Feather? Not so much. Now, missing second land drop of Boros Feather, maybe not where it wants to be. But a card I want to highlight that's in Andrew's deck, a four of from Streets of New Capenna, Illuminator Virtuoso. That's a, a new card. Didn't really expect, you know, to get heroic Feather cards for... Yeah. Uh, the feather archetype from New Capenna. And this kind of thing kind of went under, you know, under the radar for a lot of players. Andrew supporting four copies of it in today. It's a one, one double strike for one and a white human rogue. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell that you control, it connives. So the double strike yeah. on that, obviously going to get really big, really quick, giving some selection to this Boris feather deck, potentially a very potent pickup from magic's most recent set. Yeah. And you see, Will Kruger starts off with the, uh, uh, he has a Blood Tithe Harvester on the field, which is a pretty good card here. It's a 3-2 um, with, with a ton of text, just like all Magic cards have nowadays. So this one um, enters the battlefield and creates a Blood Token. You can actually tap it and sacrifice it, and target creatures minus X, minus X, where X is twice the number of Blood Tokens you control. So it's a really nice, flexible removal spell uh, if you need that. And it also just brings the beat down to 3, three damage a turn. So. Very true. Now, talking about the context of this matchup, uh, you know, Boros Feather, typically a deck that wants to stick a creature and then protect with a bunch of spells. Rector's Midrange, looking to really challenge and tax those protection spells, is basically every face-up card on Will Kruger's side of the table is some flavor of a Terminate. <laughs> You're looking at Dreadbore was exiled yeah. to Chandra. Chandra can kill creatures. Bone Crusher Giant killed a creature. And you just read off Blood Tithe Harvester, which can also kill a small creature. Have to come up with a pretty uh, critical mass, I think, of creatures and spells to protect the creatures for Andrew to really work through all of these uh, potential removal spells that Will has to work with already on the table. Yeah, and then there's, you see, Will picks up a, a Kalidas Trader of Get, which is one of my favorite cards, uh, maybe ever printed. It's it's really flexible. Uh, it's obviously a great body, and it just, you know, if you're playing a bunch of point-and-click removal spells, it's a great card to be in your deck. Absolutely. Another Dreadbore revealed off of Chandra. No creatures in play for that one to target, so two damage for your trouble. Going to come across with three more points with a Blood Tithe Harvester. Looks like Kalidus consideration for Will Kruger here. That card pays you off for all these removal spells. Oh yeah, for sure. I would say Will Kruger's probably very happy to see Boros Feather across the table from him. 
uh, based on the configuration of his deck. It has tons of removal spells. And again, like we mentioned, that Bone Crusher Giant Blood Tail Harvester also have a removal staple to them. Uh, which is, which is quite, <laughs> well, how about Sword the Mirthless? Yeah, that's that fine. One, that has a removal stake to it, too. All yeah, right. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah, no problem. No biggie. No biggie. No biggie. We can this play game, without uh, this game's pretty close right now. So you see Soren the Mirthless uh, for four meta. Crimson yeah, Vow plus... pick up for Will's deck. It is uh it is pretty good. Pretty good. Top card of your library can reveal it. Get it to handle card advantage. Make some flyers, two, three flying life links if you down tick. And then that down seven points, you could deal thirteen and gain thirteen. That's any target. That could be a removal spell. But most Which likely gonna go remove... face with Andrew at ten. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say it could just remove your opponent from the game, also. This is pretty good. That, that's a removal spell. Destroy target player. <laughs> that is. <laughs> when are we gonna create that card for cheap? Uh, can't imagine very often. What would that have to cost? What what would you put the I mana don't... cost of destroy target player? Oh, a hundred. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin. That's a good number though. <laughs> yeah, like a hundred. That's gotta be a safe number, I imagine. Yeah, there I is Illuminator Virtuoso in play, and we are going to go ahead and maximize your velocity, give it haste, get a connive, do all the things. Now, Will has a lot of removal spells, but all of them kind of seem to be sorcery speed. This creature, here we go, Illuminator Virtuoso, get a good look at that one. Uncommon yep. from New Capenna. Yeah, and you, like you said, the maximize velocity on there, that's uh, that's an old throwback card. I used to put that on top of... Uh, uh, crackling drakes back in the day which was pretty cool oh talk to me about crackling drake i'm a big crackling drake <laughs> fan not just because we share a name <laughs> see i knew we could come to some common ground today It'd just take a couple okay, rounds yeah. i knew we'd get this <laughs> we're like the same magic player we enjoy the same things right. give me a give me a crackling drake any day of the week all right looks so like a flashback one. is that a homestead um, courage it looks like i believe homestead courage that's the name of it i was blanking on it for a minute played a little this card was pretty good in the limited format so i do remember what it does remember the name a little bit more difficult it gives it plus one plus one counter and it gets vigilance still into turns this card's real big can go ahead and take care of this chandra that's i believe five ten points coming across to go yeah, ahead and take care of the big. chandra ten points not quite enough to kill will <laughs> yeah, there you see homestead courage i did my homework you know, for this one, so I know, I know, like at least like seven cards that are going on in Pioneer today. So this one, this one's pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you you know what's going on in Pioneer. Um, quite a few. Yeah, a lot of these cards, cards in the Pioneer, but yeah, a lot of these cards are flexible in older formats too, and and uh, came from old standards and things like that. So you know, if you have a trade binder just laying around, if you haven't picked up in a couple years, you know, pre COVID, you just haven't played since then. You could probably pick up your trade binder and have a pretty decent start to some of these pioneer decks. If you're ever thinking about, you know, coming out to our events and you want to get into pioneer, there, there's a lot of cards that are, you know, they were flexible then and old standards, and uh, you know, maybe forgot to sell them at the end of the season, and uh, they, they go right <laughs> into these decks. So, so, so what, what do you play in pioneer then? What's your pioneer deck of choice? Me, I mean, so I was gonna play. I, I was a big fan of uh, of the Arclight Phoenix deck, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really like Rakdos style decks. So, like this one that Will's playing is probably my speed. I'm a big like point and click kind of guy. Uh, you know, any, anything that can be Rakdos or Grixis is probably my speed. Fair enough. Fair enough. And this I, deck uh, looks quite good. It does look good. It's been impressive. You know, winning plenty of Magic Online challenges. It's been a deck that uh, didn't get hit by any of the expressive iteration Winota bannings. Now it may have to switch its configuration to prepare for a different meta game. But you know, as far as actual tools that the Rakdos deck has access to, none of them removed from the most recent ban cycles. This is maybe one of those decks you mentioned that you know a deck to look out for, a deck, a known quantity that you might have to prepare for because this is a deck people probably already have and already know is pretty good. I will uh, radio down to our table spotter. I think, oh, that Homestead Courage is exiled, right? Is there a second one that you Yeah, there's one underneath there. Okay, okay. I just missed it down there. So, so mm -hmm. I, I think another thing about this Rakdos midrange deck is, um, like you mentioned, like you said, do you think that blue-white deck is still going to be good uh, this weekend? And if that blue-white deck is, people come to the conclusion that's not very good, this Rakdos deck becomes really good because people are playing creature decks. Yeah, that's extremely true. And like I'm sure the Rakdos deck probably munches up a lot of the, the green decks, right? Being able to remove all oh, the yeah. mana creatures in, indefinitely and kind of just stumble green's mana and board presence long enough to get underneath it. I have to imagine Rakdos is a decent matchup, at least there. Maybe sometimes can get, you know, overwhelmed if on the draw, but 
Uh, uh, Manzo match was pretty good. Here's a look at Kalidus, trader of Get. Maybe a card you're not as familiar with. This one was good in its standard time. Three for a life linker, legendary, non token creature, non token, very important there. Uh, would die, it exiles it instead. You get a 2 2 zombie for your trouble. You can pay two and a B, sacrifice another vampire or zombie. Put two counters on Kalidus, Trader of Get. So you can actually sacrifice things like Blood Tide Harvester to grow it too. Not normally the way to do it. Normally you munch things with removal spells and then you exile them with Kalidus. You grow your Kalidus. That's the game plan and you just beat up on creature decks. But you could do things like if you're in a racing situation like sacrificing your Blood Tide Harvester in order to get some lifelink points of damage in. Now this Illuminator Virtuoso is growing really big, really quick. Huge. Already an impressive showing on its first time on camera. Maybe Will's yeah, in a little definitely. bit of trouble. I, I was thinking, like, you know, there's only the, the only problem here that I have now is there's only one maximized velocity in the Boros Feather deck. So trying to get it through there is going to be a little bit difficult. Now, there is God's Willings and things like that, which can can, can get you through. So Andrew probably needs a yeah, couple more turns black here. would look good here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I mean, even just putting Will under the Abyss, because I believe this card's now a 7-7 seven, seven double striker, right? So just attacking yeah. with it, you have to block every single turn. Yeah. Yep, attack, block. Okay. <laughs> Quickly throw the Blood Tithe Harvester in front of the <laughs> Illuminator Virtuoso. Can't let that one get through. And Kalidus, certainly the more valuable of the two creatures. We'll see if Soren can find anything to help out here. So, so Will does have that castle locked way into There's a Dreadbore off the top. That's a pretty good rip. Yeah, Dreadbore's a nice one. Looks like another copy of Bone Crusher Giant as well, which could also do some blocking. Going to reveal Thoughtseize, take a point, Will Will Kruger. Going to Thoughtseize, look for any kind of protection spells. I know that card, by the way, just so you know. I know you know Thoughtseize, you got that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I played good. that one that's several good. times. Sounds good, yeah. So, Thoughtseize coming in and... Uh... All right, looks like Defiant Strike, defiant I believe. Defiant Strike? Maybe another Defiant Strike drawn. No second spell to be played, I think. This may be of maximized velocity just to enable the connive. Looks like because I think that other card's like a 10th district legionnaire, the other prowess card from War of the Spark. Or I'm sorry, heroic card yep. um, from okay. War of the Spark. And yeah, it looks like a backup copy can happen. And then another Defiant Strike, yeah. And then here comes the Dreadbore. Dreadbore is going to take care of that big threat. And now we get a zombie, and Will can start to recoup some of the life. And now Will firmly back in the driver's seat with the combination of Dreadbore plus Kalidus, Trader of Get. Right. And that is enough for Andrew. We're going to pick it up here in game number yeah. one. Yeah, so uh, pretty powerful stuff from uh, Will Kruger's deck. Andrew's deck really just never never took off, you know. Um, had I believe had a favorite hoplite on turn two two which is not exactly where you want to be uh you want to get those creatures out as quickly as possible uh the blood chief's thirst again will's deck is just chock full of removal so it's gonna be very difficult for andrew to be able to get through um when we look at the sideboards coming up here in a second hopefully andrew has some things that are able to get through that as you see here so wow fiend slayer Paladin. when's the last time you saw that card <laughs> another one good in its time but its time was nearly a decade ago i believe so <laughs> fiend slayer Paladin. Yeah. A sweet one. The beginning of the transition away from uh, protection and towards hexproof from. Uh, uh, probably a really good option for this matchup. Have to be pretty aware if you're Andrew that this matchup's probably not great. That card probably a nice bullet for this matchup. Yeah, a couple of Fiend Slayer Pounds. Man, that card used to give me fits when I first started playing Magic. So I started in at the tail end of uh, Theros, I believe it was. Tail end of Theros. And uh, I played Mono Black because I, it was like the best deck and I just was like a best deck guy for a long time. Sure. And uh, I could just never beat Fiend Slayer Paladin. I'm like, really? Who printed <laughs> this card? Why is this the thing that's in the game? And um, well, but yeah, that one sounds. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that one seems like it's going to be pretty good here. Honestly, I don't know that there's a ton of things you really want here. It's always weird to me. Like, like Red Cat Melee is uh, is an interesting card because you have to trade against non uh, non red creatures or planeswalkers. You have to trade a land for it, but it might be valuable to get things like Kalidus off the table. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. I think, so the, the start of the game plan for sure for this Feather deck has to be, we need to keep a creature in place. So Fiend Slayer Paladin's part of the mix. 
I think you also might want to reach for things like Feather and the uh, Fight as Ones. Some additional protection spells, some additional creatures. Just really try to overload the removal because you're not winning without a creature. The deck's not set up to try to blank Will's removal. So instead, we have to kind of fight through it. So I want to load up on creatures. I want to load up on protection spells and actually maybe throttle away from some of the removal spells. Like Kalidus is certainly a problem, but if you can prevent the removal from happening, Kalidus is literally just a four mana three, four life linker, right? So it's not doing yeah. a whole lot as long as your creatures aren't dying, especially in the late game. So you want to be the person that has, you know, the last creature standing and these ancestral angers being a sorcery, some of the more unappealing cards, I think. Uh, require you to have, keep a creature in play just at a baseline and they do help kill quickly but i don't think that's the nature of the of this matchup for the boar's feather deck makes sense makes sense to me so we'll check out uh will kruger's deck list here and again it's pretty well built in the main deck for a matchup like this uh you know you got like strangle fatal push five one mana removal spells there i mean it's just crazy to watch this deck work it's just um just, just really, really strong. So, uh, and then in the That's sideboard really again, bad. even more removal spells in the sideboard too. Yeah. Even, yeah, even more stuff like the Legion's End is a beating for decks like this. Uh, you know, that has just mono four ofs of low to the ground creatures. It's um, it's tough. And yeah, there's even that Blood Chief search that we saw in game one. There's six one mana removal spells, which is really tough for Andrew's deck to beat. For sure, and not just Crest is a two mana removal spell that only hits white creatures. It hits green creatures too, but in this matchup it only hits the white creatures. Yeah. So you're reaching for those. They don't hit the Swiss spheres, but they do catch the things like the Illuminator Virtuosos, the favorite hoplites. Like it hits some amount of the creatures. Do you want you think you want any number of those? I, I think I think so. I was just gonna say I think you do because if you assume that your opponent is on feather, which is and and it's funny because this deck is labeled Boros Feather, but they're only in the sideboard, you would assume that card is in the deck somewhere. And I think like against like uh, it 10th District Legionnaire or, or 9th, I can't remember which which district it's from. 10th, the 10th. is correct. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, like that card's really tough too. So even you see now, there's there's two white creatures on the board. So I think Nazi Strap's actually quite good. Okay, good. Makes a lot of sense. Thoughts he's here. Well, if that's the first spell and the second spell is a removal spell, maybe a good turn here for Will. Did have to leave on a tapped Castle Lockthwain. So. <laughs> No one mana removal spell like we saw in game one. The favorite hoplite is going to get a hit in, give Andrew time to deploy a second creature in the form of Illuminator Virtuoso. Uh, not very big right now, but the whole joke here, like yeah. I was talking about, is I think you really just want to put a lot of creatures in play and start really taxing some of Will's expensive removal spells. Will's got a lot of removal, but they cost mana. They cost a lot of mana, <laughs> a lot of the time. Like you said, there's some one mana ones, but Dreadbore, you know, Chandras. There's a lot of expensive removal spells that you can, you know, do a good job of blanking with some of these cheap spells and really get underneath Will's uh, a little bit slower mid range deck. Yeah, something to note for like Will's deck. There's nothing like um, like Anger of the Gods or any like sweeper effects. So having four creatures here. So there's uh, there's again there's a backup of each creature that's on the board already. Uh, I think Fight is one is is quite good. Uh, you know, against those those target removal spells, and the, but this ancestral anger is is what will really like get those things growing. But I, I like this if you will, if you if you have some removal like he does here, I think fight is one is a good way to to tear apart the hand here. So we'll go ahead. Yeah, and like fight of one is one the of selection. Leaving the second copy of Illuminator Virtuoso suggests potentially you know uh, a removal spell on the horizon for next turn for Will as well. See if Andrew can assemble a third land, maybe play the. The Virtuoso alongside another removal spell. We got Ancestral Anger targeting our Hoplite here. That one's going to draw a card. Yeah. Get a little bit of additional power. Defiant Strike, another good draw if you're looking for a land. That was an instant. Going to go to combat, make an attack. No blocks. Three points of damage for Will. And another favorite Hoplite. Now you were referencing that uh, <laughs> Legion's End card. Uh, probably be pretty yeah. good right here. <laughs> <laughs> be quite good. I'd be I'd be very upset if I was Andrew and that happened to me. So, Will with another thought sees here, and there is a defiant strike in hand there. And I actually defiant strike looks like God's what's willing. What's maybe? The alternate? No. Is that God's willing? Yeah. I think that's God's willing alternative. Yeah, there we go. I that one's going right. to get selected. No thank you, says Will. All those protection spells that are good against my removal Man. spells need to go away. <laughs> and we'll kill that favorite hoplite, too. Just crazy. I think Will actually has another fatal push in hand, too, which is just yeah. absurd. 
I mean, this is Will kind of doing it the right way too, right? The, if the plan for Andrew in the post sideboard games is to play creatures and try to protect them, like kind of overwhelm Will's removal, then some of the best way to fight back against that is discard spell first, take care of the protection spells, then fire off the removal spells. And here's a fable of the mirror breaker. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very ethical game for Will. He's just playing the one-for-one -one game and kind of uh, <laughs> hope, hoping that it's good enough. And, and the thing is, it's like, can Andrew's deck beat beat like the one-for-one -one game plan? And we're going to find out here in just a second. We'll find out. I mean, Andrew's deck very, very efficient. The only other breaker going to create a 2-2 two -two that whenever it attacks, it doesn't have to do anything else but attack, you get a nice treasure token. Then on the next chapter, can discard up to two cards. If you do, draw that many cards. And then you can exile Saga, return it to the battlefield, and it is a 2-2 reflection of Kiki Jiki, enchantment creature, goblin shaman, one and tap it, create a token that's a copy of another non-legendary creature you control. Right. Something that's haste, sacrifice the beginning yeah. and stuff. Andrew's doing his thing here. Just churning through the deck, yeah. making that hoplite rather large. And again, the uh the heroic on favorite hoplite is uh, it, it prevents all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. And it gets a plus one plus one counter. So Exactly. And I believe we saw Homestead Courage too, which gave it an additional counter. So now we're looking at at least yeah. a 5-5. Five five. No attack suggests that potentially looking to okay. block this 2-2 two two that would provide Will with additional treasures. Tapped out on his turn. So Andrew cannot protect this favorite Hoplite at all. Andrew's saying, all right, look, you've had three fatal pushes. If you have more removal, then it's just going to die. That's where we're at. I can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another defiant strike. Going to get through the deck. Keep working through. There's a reckless rage. That's a big one to get against this Kalidas. Oh, for sure. And especially with it as big as it is, if we can clear both of these creatures or give protection or whatever, Will might just be dead. Yeah. Favorite hoplite number two. Attack as vigilance. Going to block. Looks like there's a homestead courage to give that one vigilance. Going to block with the token. Too much damage for Will to take a hit on that one. Already at a precarious nine. And Will certainly looking... Oh, no, it is tapped. All right, cool. Maybe I was just a little behind on my recording there. Will looking to untap. Get another blocker out of this Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah. He's going to be able to gain some life back, back with this... Uh... Oh, maybe not. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because like you need removal spells, so you want to fire up this castle lock, Dwayne. Yeah, this this attack with Kalidus. Yeah, yeah. If you're not playing to block with it, then you might as well attack. Get the life points in. This fable looks like it's already yeah. on blocking duty. Can't make a copy of Kalidus. Notably, Kalidus is a legendary creature. I wonder if they're talking about lifelink here. How this works? Oh, maybe he's blocking in the. the oh rate. wow, um, that prevents the life gain because it targets the thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. So, uh, so really nice play there by Andrew. So, just to kind of talk about what we were talking, what what we were seeing there is, so Reckless Rage targets the favorite Hoplite. Uh, it goes after the token, and kills the token, and then it the again that heroic ability on favorite Hoplite says it gets a plus one plus one counter, and it prevents all damage that it would be dealt for the turn. Some some words that that are like that, right? So when you <laughs> sure. when you block the the life link does not happen, right? So Will unable to yeah, gain that three life, life, which would be enough to, right, which would be able to save him for the turn, able to swing back through and kill kill Will in the backswing. So really nice play there uh, to hold that reckless rage uh, for Andrew to uh, to take Will out. So yeah, that game played out just like I thought. Like the post board games would go is Andrew's going to need like a critical mass of creatures, uh, which he had four, I believe, in the in that opener or off the draw. Uh, was able to put one of and able to stick at least one. Will killed. Three of them with fatal pushes, uh, and the last one just was enough to, to do the rest of the damage. So, I think game three is going to look very similar. What do you think? Uh, I have to agree with you, especially if we're going to see Andrew winning the game. And that's going to be the mixture that Andrew needs. An important bit to that is not only do they have creatures, not only do they have the protection spells, which did get tagged with the discard spells from Will Kruger, but he also had things like ancestral anger and the homestead courage, is like a critical mass of that stuff yeah. to grow the favored hoplite once the dust settled. So definitely the mixture Andrew was looking for. And even though Will had a great start with you know two discard spells, three fatal pushes to answer all the early threats. Andrew was still able to overwhelm the removal spells in the sideboard shows 
you know, kind of the preparedness that Andrew has in the sideboard game for this matchup is Will sure. once again leading on a tap land. I kind of wonder if that hurt Will too much in the last game as well. As there's multiple lands entering tap on Will's side of the field. Oh, man. So this is really rough here for Andrew because you can see there's three lands. There's a, there's a couple of, there's three of the enchant spells. And there's just one creature, which Will's going to go ahead and take that feather. And I think I saw Will had a Legion's End in hand also, which is real bad beating. So Andrew's going to need to find a creature immediately. Yeah, Feather, an extremely powerful one. I think Andrew kind of looking to more or less overwhelm the removal later in the game, looking to make early land drops, which we see this hand can do, have a critical mass of things yeah. like spells to also pair with your creatures that you can do maybe over the top of a Sorcery Speed removal spell from Will. Um, so Andrew left without a creature, but even if you got to keep Feather, Feather's still a three-mana creature that you're probably not necessarily looking to play on turn three. So it kind of suggests maybe Andrew on the draw here thinking he can't really get under Will and looking to instead kind of try to just hold all the cards, overwhelm Will in one big turn in which Andrew wins on mana efficiency. Yeah, Dreadhorde Arkin is a nice pickup there. If you're going to draw one, that's one that's going to get you back in it. But uh, again, mention that Legion's End. That one goes, you get to see your hand, I believe, too, to make sure if there's another copy, it gets taken. But Will knows the hand, so uh, just going to be kind of a formality <laughs> Same cards, haven't point. changed. <laughs> Here's the five cards I have. So Legion's End's really powerful. Being able to strip uh, not only to to remove a creature from the board, but also get to see what's next. I think he actually drew a Dreadheart Arcanist. That's, that's pretty funny. That's really funny. Can't, <laughs> doesn't hit the top of the deck. <laughs> you can't yeah. Legion's in the top of the deck either. And back to Will. Uh, now, this is not really the game I think that... Oh, there it is. The, the typical discard into removal spell, most likely. But normally... You know, this is not really the game you. I think you really want to play as Feather. You don't really want to just play yeah. one creature and get it removed, play one creature, get it removed. Unlike last game where we saw multiple creatures in play so that at least when Will is discarding and killing a creature, you're still attacking with another creature. You're, you're gaining headway. Whereas here, you're, you're not really. You're kind of just treading water and one for oneing. And Will has very powerful spells, Planeswalkers like Chandra and Soren and Kalidus that he can play in the late game. Treading water like this is not where you want to be as the Feather deck. So I tell you what, if Andrew's gonna gonna draw creatures, being off the top of the deck is the best way for them to be right now. And uh, he's hit the past three turns on creatures, and that's that's pretty that's pretty good. Yeah, definitely, definitely the way you want to do it. Castle Lockwing gonna add to the mix. Could activate that if we want. Looks like there's a Kalidus and a Fable of the Mirror Breaker as potential plays for Will. Yeah, that's. Well, Duress, maybe, is the last card. Could Duress plus Fable or Cascalitas? Two potentially very good turns. Will's got to think about you know, how Andrew's going to sequence those cards in his hand. Could, yeah, let me read Ancestral Anger. How much damage am I taking if I don't answer this thing? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question there. All right. Because Will does know literally Andrew's entire hand. So if he casts Duress, there's no learned information. It's do you want to Duress one of these cards that you know about? Right. Exactly. And looks like the answer might be yes, given that Fable and Mirror Breaker is what we've decided to play. Good one to get in play, too, if you want to move through these chapters. Does not choose to play Duress. Maybe planning to... Uh, Try to duress any kind of protection spells that come off the top or from some of these, you know, cantripping pump spells, things like Defiant Strikes and Ancestral Angers. So so this Ancestral Anger gives it trample as well. So this is going to be a pretty sizable hit that uh, was going to take. So you see Ancestral Anger there. Sorcery target creature gets, gains trample and gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is, the, is one plus the number of cards named Ancestral Anger in your graveyard. And you get the draw card, so it replaces itself. So yeah, we'll take spicy five one. There. Remember, this is the accumulated knowledge where it checks the graveyard to see how many copies are available yes. before provide, potentially pumping up the effect. But at the very least, I believe you get uh, one point of power as well as trample, like you mentioned, and a card for your trouble. So a sorcery speed to find strike at, a, at the floor. At the ceiling, it can be quite potent. Yeah. So Will has a dread bore pickup for the turn. Go ahead and dread for the soul scar mage. No to rest before. Looks like fight as one. Is that what that is? Is that a fight as one? I don't. Either way, I'm willing to bet so. it's a protection that was, a spell. was that a Gancho? Yeah. Right. 
good question. Might have been Sajiri Shelter, actually. I think it's what that was. I think Sajiri it was Shelter. Shelter. Yeah, there you go. Sure. The land, the land protection spell. Okay. Creature gains protection the color of your choice at any turn. Can name black or red. Gonna protect you from Dreadboard, no matter which one you name. Can't mess that one up. This here is a favorite hoplite as the follow-up on Andrew's turn. Just a two-three is this Soul Scar Mage, though. Still good enough to get through the two-two token from the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And Fable of the Mirror Breaker gonna go ahead and flip to uh, an additional two-two right now. Yeah, Will has that Kalidas hanging out in hand. He would love to have a removal spell. It's the I think it's a Blood Chief's Thirst, actually. Sure is. That's, that's uh, a big, really big turn. Kalidus into removal spell on the same turn. That's the way you want to do yep. it. But yeah, there's a fight as one. Like there's a response. Yeah, fight as one. Exactly what the doctor ordered to answer that. No vampire, or I'm sorry, zombie tokens for Kalidus to munch up. So very good job by Andrew stifling Will's ability to draw firmly ahead here. We'll see if he has yep. a good follow up. I think there's a homestead courage at least. Ancestral anger, a good draw. We're just ripping through his deck pretty quickly here. Yeah. Let's see. Looks like now we're going to reach for the homestead courage. Going to go ahead and give vigilance, take a point off the land. Now, which one do you pump if you're Andrew here? I think you have to pump the favorite hop blight, right? That way, you know. Will doesn't get any life from blocking if he tries to assemble some kind right. of double block or anything like that. And it looks like, yeah, Will's just yeah. going to go ahead and tank the hit. Now, now it's kind of a weird way to, like, like you can't even tell if you're supposed to attack, right? Because if you attack with Cletus to, like, try to gain some life or, or at the very least trade with a creature, you can maybe do something, like, there's a card in Andrew's hand. You can maybe respond uh, with... Trigger heroic on favorite hoplite. You don't even gain life and you just lose your Kalidas. So attacking looking a little dangerous in the face of wow. well, apparently it has a fifth point of power. Maybe there's another homestead courage too. All right, well now you just can't attack yeah. at all. You just run it face first into this huge favorite hoplite. And will once again in the position where he needs removal spells. Fortunately, there's a lot of them in his deck. So see if he can find one off the top of his deck on this he's following got, turn. He's got he's got plenty of chump blockers here. That favorite hoplite's a five right now, I believe favorite hot plate yeah appears to be a five actually might be a little bit bigger with the ancestral anger i wonder how many right. prowess triggers i think three right been three one mana spells oh he oh, hit a god's willing damage two. oh my gosh oh my goodness gracious so he goes ahead and uh yeah andrew Walters comes out of nowhere to get will kruger wow that was that was crazy. I thought it was over once the Cletus hit and there was a blood tree thirst, but uh, protection spell, into protection spell was uh, quite good there. So Andrew Waltais with a really well played game, game three there. That was that was crazy to watch at the end there. I, I thought oh. I thought he was dead to rights when he had no creatures and just the feather got stripped out of hand with a turn two thoughtsies and uh, managed to pull it out. Man, that was that was special. That was so crazy. If there's one thing I, in particular, mess up across you know the history of Magic, it is underestimating the heroic decks. A lot of cards that look yeah. like they should be unimpressive, and they just explode out of nowhere with some impressive wins. It was really cool to see Andrew do that in the face of what you know I, at the beginning of the match, called probably a pretty bad matchup, right? Like you're looking at the deck full of Terminates yeah. versus the deck full of little creatures that you want to keep in play. Yeah. Uh, you know I, you have to favor the Terminates because then there's no creatures. You just have all these spells that don't do anything, but. You know, Andrew came ready for the matchup. Didn't even need Fiend Slayer Paladin. Just overwhelmed Will's removal right. and took the victory. Impressive stuff from Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, pretty wild. So I think we're going to have a backup match here. So we're going to jump down to that as soon as we can here. And we're going to show it to you, I think, in its entirety is what it sounds like here. So we'll jump into that. A couple different decks, too. We're going to try and showcase uh, a few different things, obviously, throughout the tournament here. Uh, again, week one, in quotes, of a new... new um, pioneer format so we got carly peterson on the left and she is playing mono blue spirits against cody bean who's playing oh man check it out demir control this is my kind of magic yeah these are two decks that i i can't say we saw really much of prior to the banning of expressive iteration of winota so maybe a potentially brand new matchup to the pioneer format at least one i have not had the pleasure of seeing before but at a level one it seems like spirits being able to play flash creatures would be good against demir control but demir control sounds like it has a lot of removal spells who do you like here in the matchup yeah 
I, so uh, so I'm just like browsing through these deck lists right now. Again, Mono Blue Spirits, like you mentioned, has a lot of stuff that's that's kind of a pain because you know you can get flash on a lot of them. Uh, and, you know, Rattle Chains gives all of them flash, and like as a static ability. Uh, I do like Demir Control a lot though because so when Mono Blue Spirits was a deck in standard. That was the selling point, right? You could fly over and, and play Flash, but now Demir Control has stuff like four Shark Typhoons, which plays pretty well as a removal spell and as a card draw engine for uh, the, these control decks. So I would favor Demir Control, I think, mostly because of Shark Typhoon. Yeah, that's a nice call out. Shark Typhoon being uncounterable in the face of this Curious Obsession strategy, trying to kind of protect the Queen. We saw this, like you said, in Standard, you know, Autumn Burchett becoming the first mythic champion alongside a mono blue strategy very yep. similar not necessarily spirits tribal but you know when you're in pioneer you get to upgrade a lot of your creatures to leverage some tribal synergies in addition to the power of curious obsession with evasive creatures and counter spells we'll see if your mirror control has some of those namesake uh shark typhoons that can be very very effective against these little uh, relatively small <laughs> flying attackers is there comes a hit for I believe five. Man, I used to love. I used to love Jace Rain's Prodigy. That's like one of my favorite cards, maybe of all time. Really? You, so do you like the standard, standard format? I've heard mixed reviews. Yeah, Most I, people like it, but I've heard some people I, say they really hated it. I, I loved that format. It, it was very expensive because there was fetch lands and all kinds of stuff in there. Um, but and Jace Rain's Prodigy got for like eighty or hundred bucks at one point. But that format was so good. Absolutely. So Narset discarded are not super appealing in the face of a bunch of evasive attackers. There's Jace Friends Prodigy. Two mana mythic. A lot of people underestimated this one. Needs five cards in the graveyard when yeah. it loots to flip and flips into Chase Telepath Unbound, able to do a little bit of fogging creatures and flashback and instant sorcery spell. So, you know, obviously very favored with uh some removal spells, just kind of playing a control game and then run away with the game with your cheap planeswalker as you are able to filter away potentially some of your bad cards and other matchups by looting them into the graveyard with Jace. Fixes a lot of problems for control decks. Yeah, yeah Fatal Push in response to that. Mausoleum Wanderer. <laughs> Going to try to stop that yeah. one. Rattle Chains in response to that. Building up a huge stack. Another Fatal Push on, on the out there, too. So Mausoleum Wanderer is a tough one. Yeah, going to let the Rattle Chains resolve and maybe respond with the trigger on the steel? No. Going to let all this happen. We're going to trigger all these Mausoleum Wanderers. They get bigger. They threaten the counter spells. And suddenly, with the Fatal Push countered and a huge attack coming across here, because this Mausoleum Wanderer is pumped twice, plus an extra point for the um, yeah. Ascendant, plus another one. You, I mean, you have to start... You guys can't even block with Jace. You fire off another fatal push targeting Mausoleum Wanderer. Yeah. You can't sac oh you can't yeah, you can't sacrifice that one to make him pay two. So that one's gonna now, go now, down. Here's the thing. Carly has one mana available, and uh Cody I think has an extinction event in hand, which is quite good against this board. Yeah, Extinction Event could help clean up this board quite a bit. And especially if you get to flip your Jace first. That way your Jace wow. doesn't get caught. But looks like the Mausoleum yeah. Wanderer is going to do a good job of stifling your ability to cast Extinction Event. And we're going to go ahead and scoop up yeah. game number one. Impressive showing from Spirits right. there. Yeah, Spirits on the front foot uh, is really tough. Uh, especially even against whatever removal you have. So we're going to bring up some deck lists here again. Uh, everything's pretty new here. So we'll check out. Cody Beans, Demir Control Deck. This looks pretty cool. There's, um, again, those four Shark Typhoons, like I had mentioned. There is, and I assume some of these things, like these Sensors, Disallows, probably going to, Sinister Sabotage, probably going to get removed. Um, you know, there's another Shadows Verdict. There's Mystical Dispute is a huge one against this uh, Spirits deck. Oh, yeah, definitely agree with you there. I mean, being able to just fight at the same efficiency rate as them, having a one-mana answer to their one-mana cards, uh, upgrades your ability to interact with them a lot. And like you said, getting rid of these three-mana counter spells when you're only counterspelling, you know, cards that cost like one to two mana, you're trading down on mana with your counter spells, And that's not where you want to be in the control deck at all. You'd rather be getting two-for-ones with your sweepers and, you know, having cheap one-for-one -one removal spells like your fatal pushes and then, like you said, sweepers. So 
upgrading the mystical disputes and getting some additional removal spells and cutting some of these clunkier counter spells i think going to go a long way to giving cody bean some help in this matchup yeah i think that suits cody quite well I, i'd be surprised if he's uh not at least an even matchup after after the board here so uh we're gonna move over to carly's deck list here and see hers is probably just a bunch of four ups yeah check it out so tons of four ofs this deck was uh pretty streamlined at the end of uh its existence in standard so i mean it is very very efficient obviously you can see nothing really is three mana i, I like brazen borrow is but it is not three mana and uh like lofty denial uh the geist light snares those are three mana but not really also three and two mana but not really so they're uh it's a very efficient deck i would say yeah it's so cool geist light snare paired alongside a spirit that has the curious obsession on it becoming a one mana mana leak incredibly impressive yeah. as uh, a uh, a counter spell and like you said i i'm a big fan of the four of it's very aesthetically pleasing to just look at a pile of four ofs and just be like all right i've got a plan and i'm all in on it and i really appreciate that out of the sideboard mystical disputes i'm sure good on carly's side as well uh, a couple other cards to look at is like slip out the back that can protect one of your creatures you put a counter on it phases out and kind of protect your creature a little bit um and maybe you reach for like the strokes or whatever if you want a couple additional like if you're worried about the sweepers but for the most part don't want to make too many sweeping changes here uh definitely want to keep to your your counter spells and your flash creatures uh obviously was very effective in game number one uh can, oh, looking to run it back here in game two so yep. not a lot of changes just a few yep. a few counter spells picked up yeah, Carly having four mystical disputes of her own is just pretty pretty good too, uh, especially against like, these control matchups, these blue blue base control decks. Uh, I also really like something to shout out is the three faceless havens in the deck. Sometimes you know they'll kill all your creatures, or they'll counter all your creatures. Faceless haven is a nice backup plan to have uh, when your opponent is you know either playing wraths or or, or things like that. Uh, faceless haven is is a really nice addition to this deck, and I'm sure I know that you need a lot of a ton of islands but the three is probably pretty free in this deck i would assume oh yeah there's a ton of cute tricks too right like it's a spirit so it gets pumped by your supreme phantom and your shackle right. geist you can attack with it because it has vigilance and then you can tap it in combat while it's attacking to the shackle geist ability to tap a creature in combat as well using maybe a summoning six spirit and the attacking faceless haven so a ton of little cute tricks you can do with it in addition to like you said just being great wrath insurance we saw that you know, potency and standard. I think it even got banned in standard or whatever, right? Cards extremely, yep. extremely potent um, as a creature land and a great addition to the spirits deck here in Pioneer. Yeah. Both players in the pink sleeves. I like it a lot. Oh, yeah. That looks great. That looks great. It looks like they're, I don't know if they're different shades or not, but uh, yeah, it looks, looks great. Cody taking a quick mulligan here. That's funny. I mentioned that I thought it was free to have Faceless Havens, and I think Carly actually has two of them in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe looking a little less yeah. free. I mean, the having three uh, uh, instead of four maybe would indicate that it's not as free as it seems on paper. Otherwise, you'd certainly, I'm sure, reach yeah. for the fourth. But uh, a lot of blue pips in uh, Carly's spells that you need to be casted. So uh, Faceless yeah. Havens potentially could shut down some double spell turns. We'll see. Island in a passing of the turn. Sensor is going to go ahead and get Sensor cycled. Getting cycled here. Tap land. All right. A fetid pools. That was a big pickup because I don't think Cody actually had. I don't think he actually had black mana until then. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a great draw. Then here comes Spectral Sailor. Got to be happy with no Curious Obsession. Let's see what Carly's follow up is now. Carly's follow up most likely going to come at instant speed. Both these players kind of looking to play on their opponent's turn, so kind of trading uh trading turns. Uh, she plays on his turn, he plays on her turn. We'll figure it out. All right. Font sees a good start. Oh, duplicate rattle chains. Curious obsession in the mix. Mystical dispute. Mausoleum wonder. Faceless haven. Can't take the haven, but a lot of good other options. Cody taking a look. A lot of removal spells in Cody's hand. Yeah. Taking the obsession. Interesting. Leaving leaving Carly with all the rattle chains. Indicative, I think, that maybe Cody's planning to approach this game from a sweeper standpoint. <laughs> maybe a little bit less on the uh one for one removal. Yeah, I would I would assume so. 
Looks like and again, we might see an in-step rattle chain based on her posturing. And we sure are. We're going to go ahead and cast a rattle chain, see if Cody wants to respond. Says thumbs up. And we're going to go ahead and untap. Some quick magic for both these players. Faces Haven number two deployed. Attack for three. Pass the turn. Untap. I'm actually kind of surprised Cody did not deploy a shark there. Really? Maybe, maybe like we said, maybe he's reaching for like a sleeper first. I was, I was kind of surprised if first. he did. Yeah. Okay. And maybe trying to get a shark big enough to... Uh, Block and survive at the same time, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, maybe he's also trying to reach for like a sweeper or something, and then follow up the sweeper with the shark typhoon. Not sure. It's not a huge attack. Like an attack for three, you know, is some pressure. You certainly have to answer it. But with Cody being a still relatively healthy life total, not too scared. And here we have a cycle for one. Looks like maybe in combat. Yeah, gonna go ahead and try to block okay. rattle chains. Oh, Cody has mystical dispute. Got it. Okay. All right. Carly has dispute two that's a pretty that good... we know about. Oh, that's a big pickup for Cody there. That's a field of ruin. Uh and, and that's a that's a pretty nice removal spell for one of those uh faceless havens that might be a problem later in the game here. Yeah, you called out definitely post sweeper the faceless havens can be a huge problem. Now an onboard answer. Rattle chains on the stack. Fatal push in response. Rattle, Second rattle. Uh, sorry, third rattle yeah. chase in response. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be yeah, frustrating sure. if you're Cody. You've been through two of these. Why do you have another one? Here is the mystical dispute from Cody. Take care of that. Whole stack's going to go ahead and resolve. Maybe, oh, maybe we were fatal pushing the one with it on the stack. I thought that one was still on the stack. Okay. It looks like that makes control. sense. That makes sense, John. Hard to tell where these games are sometimes because of the way that, the, just the way that Mono Blue is able to play at instant speed. Yeah, there's both these decks looking to respond at very specific points in time, and that communication we are not privy to, but we can try to deduce it the best we can. Mausoleum Wanderer added to the mix. Is it time to start drawing cards with Spectral Sailor? <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be pretty close to that time. Comes a cling to dust. Well, if you, Cody's going to draw a fresh one. If you look at how Carly can use her mana, right? right? She has kind of two paths she can take. She can either animate this Faceless Haven. Obviously, it's going to get tagged. The first one's going to get tagged, but you have a second one. You can either start trying to get damage in with Faceless Haven, or you can start drawing cards with Spectral Sailor. It all depends on if you're trying to push damage here or you're trying to compete you know, into the late game with card advantage. And it looks like, based on Carly's posturing, we're looking to draw some cards. Extinction it's Event. event. And Carly has this mystical dispute. Whew. All right. But that's uh, a good one. Cody has one. Oh, Cody has a, Cody has a mystical dispute in hand. Yeah. That'll be good enough to tag the Mausoleum The thing mausoleum is, is now there's wanderer. this Mausoleum Wanderer. Yeah. So ma respond with dispute. You sack the Mausoleum Wanderer to hit the original extinction event. And that'll clear the stack. But there's still a Spectral Sailor. And both players really low on resources. This is really where Spectral Sailor shines. But we're going to go ahead and crunch in for five. While the shields are down for Cody. Can't Field of Ruin quite yet. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Down to seven. Castle Lockdwain and Castle another Lock land Wayne, for Cody. Lockdwain hurts to activate here. Didn't get a great look wow. at what Carly has. Yeah, it's uh... quickly firing up the Haven. Yeah. After attack's going to blow that up. Response, fourth rattle chains in response to the field of ruin? That's incredible. Fourth rattle chains is going to look incredible here. And now that field of ruin that was so crucial for Cody is completely ineffective as here comes five more points of damage. Cody to precarious two and a sweeper, not even an out for Cody anymore as, you know, the Faceless Haven still represents the ability to kill yeah. Cody post-sweeper. Yeah, this game, I mean, again, you see the, the, the power of those creature lands, and it's like, 
you know, what do you really do? So Carly Peterson going to pick up a W over, uh, over Demir Control. Mono Blue Spirits.